many people have asked me to explain how I received the book Through the Eyes of Jesus because they've been touched so deeply by the book. Well, I'd like to ex explain some of the experiences I had as I got the book and how the Lord revealed his life to me. Now, I was a man who didn't believe in God at all, but he came into my life and changed it and filled me with his divine love, his divine spirit, and brought me to live the Catholic faith. And that was in 1994. About two years later in 1996, the Lord Jesus said to me, I'd like to show you some episodes of my life as I walk the Holy Land, because it will help benefit you and benefit others. And it's a, the most wonderful experience because the Lord opened his, his life to me and I was filled with grace to be able to see through his eyes at times and that's why it was called through the eyes of Jesus because I could see what the Lord was seeing I could experience some of his emotions some of his thoughts at other times I could see through the eyes of the apostles uh, watching Jesus what he did listening to what he said and experiencing their emotions at the time other times I was looking through the eyes of the people who were just there to be healed or had come for prayers or just to listen to the wonderful words of our Lord. And as the Lord gave it to me, I was sitting writing in my house and it was as if I was in this world but not in this world. I was taken into that time to exist in that time to get all the words, all the feelings, all the experience. And as I was going through this, I wrote it down in the words the Lord gave me, what I was seeing, what I was experiencing. So everything that's in the book is as I experienced it, as I happened, and at that time. And there was originally this three volumes, which is now into to one book. And people always ask for more volumes. But the Lord said to me that three was what he was going to give me. And within those three books, there is so much that people can learn from, can be touched by, and be drawn closer to God. And the book is so wonderful because what it does, it also opens up Jesus' humanity to us, so we can see how he felt, the emotions that he had at times, as he saw some terrible suffering, some wonderful joy, uh, joyful things be before him. And so, so in the book you can come to, to experience these. And it, it, it makes you laugh, it makes you cry. And when you experience the tenderness and the wonderful depth of Jesus' love in the words, that brings you to tears because it's such tender love, such sweet love, such joyful and powerful love, an, an overwhelming love. And when that touches you, then you can't help but cry with love for God and love for others. Because as that love touches you, you start to also see through that book how much Jesus loved others. He had such a deep love for each person. And as you experience that love, then your love hopefully for others grows as, as well as, as mine has. I, I, didn't, I didn't love people, but Jesus brought me to love people more and more by experiencing his love for others. And I hope this is what will happen for those who, who read the book and, and uh, uh, benefit from it. In, in the book, it's about a three month period as it leads up to Jerusalem and the Lord's suffering, the Lord's passion. It's the time before that, uh, walking with the apostles, uh, the, com the conversations they had, the events that happened, a, a wonderful part of our Lord's life. And it's full of such mystery, such wonder, such miracles, such love, and it's something we can, we can all learn from. And I hope and pray that anyone who would get this book and read it will benefit from it as I have, because it wasn't given to me for me, it was given through me for everyone. And I don't see it as, as my book, I see it as Jesus' book, his book of love, where he opens his heart to each person and says, here's my humanity, here's my love, united in my divinity. Bring your humanity to me 
and let me unite your humanity, your love in my love and my divinity so that you can be a better person. You can be a true Christian, a true lover of God and a true lover, lover of others. And so this book helps bring us closer to God, the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit, helping us to open our hearts, our lives more and more to Jesus and helps us to walk in our lives, or has helped me any and, and many others who've told me the same thing, it's helped me to walk more in the way of Jesus as I live my life, relating to people in the way that he related to them. And that's what we should be striving to do, to live the way of Jesus, to love the way of Jesus, and to be an image of Jesus to everyone. And for me, the, through the eyes of Jesus, it was one of the greatest blessings that I've ever received. Of course, the Eucharist is the greatest blessing, but this book is so wonderful. I can never thank God enough that he would give it to someone like me, someone who didn't know God, who didn't love God, someone who was a sinner, someone who behaved so badly, did many terrible things. And yet, despite that, God, in his divine love, reached into my life, into my heart and my soul to share these experiences with me so that other people who are struggling in life as I was, and still am, other people who maybe have done some wrong things in life, can see and feel the love of God and understand it's for them, and not just for holy people, not just for those who you say, see praying every day and going to church every day, which is wonderful, but it's for everyone, so that everyone can walk with Jesus, everyone can see through his eyes, and everyone can learn from his divine love and his divine grace. Faith, it's a remarkable thing. It's a thing that can be really hard to explain sometimes. And when you have it, it can move you to do things that can also be really hard to explain sometimes. The stories of the crowds who travel for kilometers just to simply touch the cloak of Jesus always amaze me. I can only but imagine their stories, what their sickness was, what their illness was, what they were trying to get healed. I can only imagine the things they tried to do to get that healing they so desired. Then, someday, somewhere, someone tells them about this man, Jesus. This man who has been doing wonderful things. This man who has been healing people and raising people from the dead. And then they tell them all they have to do is simply reach out and touch him. And then just like that, it happens. Faith. They believe and they must go and see him. But what if one struggles to believe? What if something is holding them back? Pride, fear, doubt? Judas, the man who betrayed Jesus, we know him all too well. My heart breaks for him. He was so close. But something was holding him back. Jesus so desperately wanted him to know that he still loves him. He never stopped loving him. But I get it. It's hard. I too can find it really hard sometimes and think that I know what's best. Or I might think that God is holding back on me. I get it. It's hard. And sometimes we may never understand. But I guess that's what faith is. Now we'll hear from Alan Ames as he shares his experience of seeing this story through the eyes of Jesus. I uh, would like to share a little bit from Through the Eyes of Jesus and you'll, you'll hear someone read the story to you and I hope you will listen carefully to the, the words of Jesus but I'd, I'd just like to share a little bit with you and try and explain maybe some of what Jesus is 
trying to help us understand. And this was on the 2nd of February 1996, and it's called the, the title of the story is A Soldier's Healing, but there's much more in it than that. And it actually begins with uh, the healing of a, of a child. And this is Jesus speaking. I opened my arms wide and said, all those in need, find it in me. All those in pain, be freed through me. All those who are lost, be found by me. I am the light come into the world to lift mankind's burdens. I am the light that shines in the dark. I am the light sent by the Father to show the way. As the crowd pushed forward, a little child came running forward with one leg so much shorter than the other. Holding his mother's hand so tight, he stumbled forward. Rabbi, please touch my son. Please heal him. He was born this way, and it must be that he's paying for my sins. Please, Rabbi, heal him. Ask of me what you will, and I will give it, but please heal my innocent son. She broke into tears, and her son embraced her and started to sob. Mother, don't cry. I love you. Mother, please don't cry. My heart broke to see such sorrow, to see so much love. How could I not answer her? Child, come to me, I said. The child looked hesitantly at me. Come, I said. Nervously, he hobbled forward, and I reached down and picked him up. As I embraced him, I kissed away his tears and called to the father, Father, you have sent me to do your will. So now to glorify you, I set this child free in your love. When I placed the child on the ground, he was cured and his legs were even. All the people began to shout praises to God and his mother started to kiss my feet. I raised her up and said, Now you know the love of God. Bring your child up as an offering for God's glory. Just in that little bit from this much longer story, Jesus is reminding us that he's the light that's come into the world to disperse the darkness in the world. Today we live, so many of us live in life, surrounded by and touched by darkness. Some of us even invite darkness into our life through the sins that we commit. And because of that we suffer, or our families suffer, other people suffer. But Jesus is reminding us that he's there, there with his divine light, waiting to reach into our hearts and souls, to set fire to them with the blaze of his love, so it can burn so brightly that it will burn the darkness away within us and around us. But we just want to seek that. We just want to, to have that, to, to reach out and ask Jesus for it with a true and open heart. And when we do, our lives will be healed. Our souls will be healed. And not only ours, the people around us through whom the darkness within our lives maybe has touched, or those who are living in darkness, that light will reach out through us to touch them. Now this mother with the child, she thought it was her sins, the darkness in her life that caused the suffering of her son. But later on in the story, Jesus explains that's not the case, that's not true. It wasn't her sins or her suffering. The child isn't suffering because of her. The child is actually there so God can show his glory when Jesus heals him and blesses him and brings his body to fullness in Christ our Lord, showing us that we, in our bodies, in our souls, in our minds, we can find fullness in Jesus. And showing us that no matter how we suffer, Jesus is there for us. Not only did he heal that child, he healed the mother because she carried this burden for years. Her son crippled, hobbling, one leg shorter than the other. And she thought it was her fault. Can you imagine the burden on her heart of a mother thinking that her son 
was suffering because of her. Well, Jesus, he lifted that burden. He lifted that suffering in the healing of the son. He healed the mother so that later the mother and the son could come to true life in him, to know him as Lord and Master, to know him as the Son of God, the Messiah. And when Jesus heals, when he heals our minds, our bodies, our souls, that's the aim, to bring us to know and to love God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit, through the wonderful grace and love of our blessed Lord Jesus. And lastly, we hear about the Roman soldier who's been attacked, a man who doesn't even believe in God. Everyone around is begging Jesus to heal this man out of fear of revenge. Jesus looks intently into the eyes of this soldier. He doesn't see fear. All he sees is love and concern for his family. And that is why Jesus decides to heal this soldier. Not out of fear, but because of the potential that Jesus sees in this man. He's so close. He sees that his heart is after God, but the soldier doesn't realize that yet. But it won't be long. Jesus and the soldier exchange only a few words. And the soldier is so moved that he falls to his knees, offering his life to God. When was the last time you fell to your knees, offering your life to God? As I was reading the story, I found myself questioning, you know, how far would I go to seek Jesus' healing? How far would I walk? What would it take for me to fall to my knees, offering my life to God? We hear of the crowds who walked for days. We hear about this Roman soldier who went from not even believing in God to falling to his knees and offering his complete life to him. Lord, I pray that you may move in my life. Help me not to doubt like Judas, but to believe like the Roman soldier, falling to my knees, offering my life to you. Now we'll hear from Alan Ames as he shares his experience of seeing this story through the eyes of Jesus. This parable is uh, quite a long one and it's called The Soldier's Healing. And uh, I'd like to share the little bit about the soldier. Later on in this parable, they've come into a, an inn where they're going to stay. And uh, when they were staying in the inn, there was some, a Roman soldier there and, and some zealots. They asked Jesus to heal the soldier who's been hurt. And I'd like to share this little bit with you. And Jesus is a, a sleeping in the room. There was a bang on the door. Master, are you awake? Come quickly. It was James, full of excitement as usual. I went outside and saw in the tavern a Roman soldier who'd been attacked by a zealot. He had a wound in his heart and everyone thought he would die. Cure him, please, Master, lest the Roman garrison come for revenge, said, cried the innkeeper. I looked at the soldier. He was a centurion, a commander of men. I saw no fear of death in his eyes, only concern for his family. This man I will heal, not to prevent revenge, but I will heal him for the love he carries in his heart and to bring his heart to God. I laid my hand on his wound and it closed. He arose and said, Holy man, I will not forget you and I will pray to my gods for your success. With love, I answered, there is no God but God, and I am the Son sent to free the world from the false gods, false idols, and false values. I do not understand you, holy man, but all I know is I feel good when you talk. 
and it seems to me that you speak the truth. Who is this God? He asked. It's my Father in heaven, who only wants goodness for all, who only loves all and calls all his family. I come to testify to the greatness of his love, his power and his mercy. Falling to his knees, he cried, Lord, I hear and I believe. From now on, I only know your Father as my God, and I only know you as Lord. Let me stay and follow you. Let me help. My friend, I replied, you need to return to your family, for they wait for you. In all you do from now on, show love. Love to all. Hurt no one, only help. Live each day as an offering of thanks to the Father in heaven. And, this, and in this way you will follow me and walk the path to eternal love. And in that one, Jesus is showing that, again, the physical healing, that was important, it was leading to the spiritual healing. The centurion knew all these other gods as the Romans did, they had, had many gods. And uh, he was obviously a man who had love in his heart, love for his family, and even though he'd done some terrible things as a, as a soldier, as soldiers do at times, Jesus looked beyond that to the love that he had within. And he healed him, knowing that in that healing, this man would be brought to the fullness of God's truth. So as he healed his body, the man now was open to receive the word of God truth of God. And Jesus told him very plainly, there are no gods but God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. He wasn't afraid to say that, to proclaim the truth. And this man in that state of healing, with his heart and soul now open to God because of that healing, was touched by that divine truth. And as that truth touched him, his whole life changed. He came to love God to love our Lord Jesus. And he came, as you discover later in the book, to live a good and holy life, looking after his family, spreading the word of God, the love of God. And that's the healing that we should all be looking for. So many look for physical healing, but the greatest healing is spiritual healing. I know because when Jesus came into my life, I had physical problems. But he didn't heal those, he healed the spiritual ones within me, the greatest healing of all. And this is what happened to that soldier. Now he came to know the truth of God through the physical healing. Because Jesus spoke the truth to him, he told him there's only one God, and that you must turn away from these other gods. Today for us that's very important to remember, because for us, the gods today are so often are money, fame, excitement, the things of the world. That's what we get trapped in. We start to worship sportsmen and movie stars and all sorts of things. And we're turning away from God and replacing God with the things of the world. And when we do that, then our hearts, our souls are closed to God. We can't receive the grace, the love that he wants to give us. In this story, Jesus reminds us there's only one God, there's only one way to heaven. The things of the world won't lead you to heaven. It's only our Lord, our God, our Master, Jesus Christ, in the love of the Father, and the grace of the Holy Spirit, that will open the door to heaven to us and embrace us in his eternal love. So the greatest healing we can have is spiritual, to truly know and love God, and the greatest healing we can bring to others is to share the truth of God with others so they too can be healed. I'm Bishop Eugene Hurley from the Diocese of Darwin, which takes in the whole of the Northern Territory of Australia. And I'm delighted that Shalom Ministry is now in a position to bring some of that good news to the rest of Australia and indeed to the world. Because we live in a world where the media is so influential, it dictates so much of our learning and our attitudes. And so it's so important that the good news of 
Jesus Christ has to be made available to all people because it's what we each need as human beings to enliven us, to make us more loving and indeed to bring about peace in the world. So it's this good news that the Shalom Ministry is trying to get across to Australia now. Let me invoke God's blessing upon the Shalom Ministry and all who work within it and all who are the subject of its good work. May the blessed Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit descend upon the Shallow Ministry and all who work in it and all their families may keep them at peace forever. Amen. Shalom World, God's own channel.